It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. YouTube. My name is Miguel, this is Ross the Wash, and on today's video I want to discuss about my pile of shame. So as you can see I already got my box for Curse City, I was quite lucky to get one myself. I really wanted to open it and start painting my new miniatures but the biggest issue that every hobbyist has is the pile of shame. I'm gonna pump those numbers up, those are rookie numbers in this racket. I'm not a professional YouTuber, this is not my job, this is just my hobby, which means that 8 to 10 hours of my day are already invested in doing something else. I also have friends, I also have other hobbies, and I really, really, really enjoy painting, but it's not my only thing in life. Nobody cares! Which means that I need to rush the watch, I need to find a method that allows me to paint my miniatures in the time that I can. All these miniatures that I bought here, some of them were basically bought because I wanted to show you how to do these with tutorials. But you know what, I don't think we need 5 videos showing you how to paint different craft walls for Eldar. Ain't nobody got time for that! And I don't think we need another 5 videos showing you how to paint Tyranids. Definitely nobody needs more videos on you learning how to paint Plague Marines. And I mean, how many different ways can you paint fur? Quite a lot, actually. Fur, sure. So all these boxes that I started collecting just for making tutorials, Rasta Wash, this is not every miniature is a work of art. This is get your pile of shame away. No specialized tools, no airbrush, no specialized techniques. Just put paint on the miniatures. If I can do it, you can do it. You wanna do it? Let's go. Ah, the ever-present pile of shame. We all have one. We start buying a couple of boxes and then all of a sudden we have an insurmountable amount of miniatures in front of us. Why do we keep doing this to ourselves? I do not know yet. It's a mystery of the hobby. Originally I had set myself to paint every day for a couple of hours, combine it with going to work, going to the gym and you know, having a life in general and also being able to paint a little bit every day. Two hours seemed like something quite feasible to finish each box but you know what? I failed, absolutely. But the material that I created was interesting enough for me to make a video and this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna show you how I did this every day. Today is Sunday and we begin after this. It's almost 8, 7.40 I think. I'm going back to my apartment now after my gym session. I had an epiphany during shower time, you know, like everybody does. And I was thinking if I should change the wolves to uh, square bases, because I could use them that way with my uh, Chaos Warriors or, you know, Warhammer Fantasy. I don't know if I want to go through that pain. You know what? Squares for life. Here we go. It's 828. The miniatures are there. As you can see, I haven't done anything to them. And I think it's time to get to work because I want them primed before tomorrow. Let me tell you right now, that never happened. When I come back from work, it's hobby time straight away. So, let's go! Okay, quick disclaimer over here. If you want to check any of the tutorials, know that you can jump to the timestamp by looking at those below. In this one, in this first video of this series, I have included three of the tutorials of the miniatures that I painted. But if you want just to unwind and just watch somebody paint miniatures, talk about life in general and whatnot, please be more than welcome to follow me through the whole video. Thank you very much, muchas gracias, un beso. I, I remember being a, a kid, oh my god, that didn't take long, when I was quite young and trying to get into the hobby. If I had to invest the amount of money that some people are actually like advocating to invest, this, this will not happen. I wouldn't be here right now. What I'm trying to say is that sometimes, many times actually in, in this hobby, and particularly if you are like me, you are an army painter, you paint to play with the miniatures, some of the tutorials that you see out there are a little bit way too much. And if you are a new person, you are coming into this as somebody that got interested, so a couple of things here. It's a pity that you might get the impression that you actually have to invest that much money, that much time, and that amount of skill is needed to get into this. It is not. You just need this, 
this and put your ass down and paint some miniatures. I promise. These bad boys are based. Painting can be done very fast, but you also have to have those small times of patience. And you know what I do usually when I have a little bit of time? I go to the kitchen and get myself some coffee. But because it's 9.41 p.m. right now and I need to wake up tomorrow at 6 a.m., uh, I don't think it's a very good idea for me to get some caffeine in my body. But I think I have some decaf. So you know what? I'm gonna do that. Hey guys, I'm back from work today. It's, what time is it? It's 4.45. Uh, yesterday I was waiting for the miniatures to dry, so I could just give them that coat of primer, but it didn't happen on, you know, normal time for me to go to bed and wake up today kind of fresh. After I get changed and I prime them, I'm gonna start painting the next batch, today's batch, and then I'm gonna go do my gym time today. So wish me luck, rush the wash. So I decided to go middle hammer with the wolves. I have a book from Mike McVeigh. I will show you that book in a few videos in the future, I think. I'm gonna show you what I use for inspiration. And I did see some schemes over there that I actually like. I think gray, it's a good way to start with wolves and also brown is a very good way to start. And I wanted to achieve a color scheme that was very similar to the middle hammer wolves that you can see written by goblins. So five miniatures, five different color schemes. The steps are very similar between them, so there is not a lot of science in here. I'm gonna put all the colors that I use for each one of the color schemes on each one of the pictures. But basically, as you can see, for these ones, I started with apothecary white, and I started building that color towards a darker one on the top of the wolf. <coughs> for this dark gray wolf, I started with Nighthawk Bloom and then I started shading it further where the fur was at. But you can continue doing this until you get an almost black wolf. For both brown wolves, I started with the Skeleton Horde and I started darkening it towards the crest, the top of the wolf, in order to achieve these different color schemes. However you want to do this, there are many different browns that you can use and you are more than free to try your own combinations, but this is how I did it. Alright, so let's see how I achieved the dark grey on top of the white wolves. Nighthorn Gloom was painted on the flanks, going up to the tail, the ears, the crest on the head and also on the back of the wolf, leaving this pattern on top of it. For the one that I degraded into brown, I used a skeleton horde as well, just like with the other miniatures, which saved me a lot of steps because I was opening the pot only once for a few different miniatures and that is actually a time saver. For those who had brown on them with the skeleton horde, I'm gonna darken them with snake bite leather and wild wood. The idea here is that you can use many different types of brown. You probably have a few paints in your repertoire that can do the same effect. Even if they are solid paints, if you dilute them enough, you can do very good washes with them. And as you can see, there is like a three step into this process. We go from a clear, very light coat at the beginning, then to a secondary coat that is a little bit darker, and then to a last third one that is quite dark goes to the top of the wolves. For my dark grey, I'm gonna darken it with Basilicano grey. If you want a wolf that is black, you should wash the whole wolf with this twice, but make sure that you dilute it a little bit, otherwise it's gonna be way too black. I'm using Basilicano grey as well to paint the snout and the paws of the wolves as well as the nails that they have. And I'm going to paint the teeth because then I'm gonna pick them out with pure white and I want it to be done against a black background. You can either dilute Basilicano Grey or use known oil and the results will be quite similar for this step. I'm just adding it to certain places where I want it to be darker. And I'm gonna paint the bases with Drakenhof Nightshade because I know this is gonna take a while to dry. The bases because of the sand are quite porous and I need to take a break. So I'm gonna do this now and while I'm just having a drink or something. I can let them dry and then I can come back to the table. As it is right now, I mean, the wolves are basically playable, but 
we need some details. I mean, I'm not happy with the paint job as it is. We still have one hour left. And that means that I'm gonna get some highlights, some details, and then I'm gonna finish the bases off. And it's gym time. I need to go do my other hobbies so I can keep some sanity. It's an easy paint job. Nothing difficult here, to be honest. Very straightforward. And for this, we're gonna crack open my number one Da Vinci Maestro. Affordable and good brush. The miniatures have a very decent quality for tabletop, but I like cleaning up a little bit. With the Shapti Bone, I'm gonna clean the ones that I painted brown, and with pure white, I'm gonna clean up the ones that I painted white on the flanks, obviously. So there are a few touch ups here and there. I also paint the eyes and I make sure that the teeth are gonna be clean as well. I'm gonna use a little bit of contrast volupus pink to paint the gums the tongues and whatnot which i previously painted white to make sure that they are very clean and then on the eye sockets which i also painted white i'm gonna put a dot of yellow in Iyandin yellow gilliman flesh is going to be used for the ears of the wolves to give them a little bit of extra life um, just a touch up, I don't know, I just like how they look, you know, and then a little bit of seraphine sepia, just to make sure that the teeth pop and they look a little bit yellowish, they are too clean otherwise. I'm going to use seraphine sepia as well to darken some places where I might have overdone with the highlights and with a little bit of black, I'm gonna paint that nice trim on the bases and consider the miniatures now finished after some touch-ups with Agrax Earthshade because this is the way I paint my Chaos Warriors bases and these guys are gonna be in that army used as Chaos Hunts. So there you go, less than two hours, five wolves painted, this is the standard, I'm quite happy with them, now it's time to go to the gym. So here we go, time to get to the other hobby, at least the one that keeps me sane, you know. There is the psychological tiredness, and then there is the physical one. The physical one is super, it's so easy to deal with. The problem is with the mental one, and that's what you have to deal with when you're doing the physical one. So, let's get to the gym. Nine thirty-seven. I'm a. Uh, Take a shower, eat something, and I think I might start cracking the Imperial Guard. And I'm gonna check some, you know, some old stuff. I want to basically try different types of camouflage. I wanna try something that is more interesting than just, you know, the typical fatigues, the, the Cadian military green and brownish. I want to try something more interesting than that. And I think I'm gonna look for some old school inspiration. They were very nice color schemes back in the day. I was this close to start painting. This close. But it's 10 30 p.m. I have to wake up at 6 a.m. I have a tendency if I start painting something and I enjoy what I'm doing, I don't stop. I advise myself against this. What I've done is I search for the second edition codex for the Imperial Guard and that's what I'm checking. I've downloaded it and I'm gonna check for different paint schemes that I want to put in these miniatures just to make it more interesting, at least that. If you paint everything the same way, obviously it's gonna be much easier for you because the research part is not something that you have to do every day. Once you decide on one, you settle and that's it. But for me today, this is my latest snack. I'm gonna check out what kind of Imperial Guard I'm gonna paint for you. All right. All right, I got home. I got home uh, a few minutes ago. It's 5.13, five and a quarter, a little bit past five. So today's painting session is going to be Imperial Guard. And I have these five guys over here and I'm gonna paint them in the different color schemes in this magnificent book from second edition. Let's try to do this. First, let me get changed and I need to get into the proper attire to do this. Get to the chopper!
I'm gonna begin with Kadia. Plague Bearer's Flesh, followed up by Warp Lining Contrast, is the base color for the Combat Fatigues. With Nighthorn Gloom, I'm gonna paint some blotches in the Fatigues, and I'm gonna follow up also by painting the boots and the armor as well as the helmet but i'm gonna leave the places in the helmet the both that go over the ears white because i want to do something else after that we're going to crack open basilica and gray and we're gonna paint over the blotches that we painted in the fatigues and also not only the armor and the boots but the places in the last rifle that they will be painted silver later on the magic of contrast is by painting in tandem by using the grey and now a darker black color, we get a nice and interesting three-dimensional looking black with highlights. I am using here Skeleton Horde to paint all the leather pouches and belts that the miniature has, as well as the chin strap on the helmet and also the skin. And I'm gonna further darken this with Contrast Wildwood, but not the skin. The skin, I'm gonna leave it as it is because I'm going to do something different with that. I'm recovering the white on the places that I have it stained with the previous washes because I want very strong colors in those. And in this case, I'm going to paint it with Blood Angels Red. This one is going to be the rifle and those two places on the helmet that I told you to leave white. Gilliman Flesh is going to be used to paint the face and the hands. And after we're done with that, we're going to use a little bit of Iyandin Yellow to paint the Aquila Imperialis and Flash Gates Yellow to paint the dots on the uniform as per the second edition uh, uniform that we have in the book. I'm also highlighting a little bit those Aquila Imperialis with that. Iron Breaker is going to be used to highlight the metallic parts in the rifle and other places that you might encounter in the miniature, which previously had been painted with Basilicatum Grey and Skeleton Horde. And with pure white, I'm going to try to pick up those eyes, the teeth, very carefully, because this is a focal point, and we just need to put a couple of dots inside those eyes and this miniature is done. The next one on the list is the Mordian Imperial Guard, for which I'm going to start by painting it with Talisker Blue. With Nighthorn Gloom, we're going to dedicate this color to the boots, the belt, the knife, the pouches, and also the last rifle. This is going to be followed up by Basilica of Grey, which is going to be painted also on top of the metallic parts of the miniature. The original Morian miniatures are wearing a gala uniform, and they have epaulets, which are those small parts that you have on the top of the jacket on the shoulders. Those do have a fringe in yellow, and that is going to be painted white after I do the coat with the color that you just saw for the jacket, which is Ultramarine's blue. So we're gonna retouch everything that we painted before in white and it's going to be painted next now in red, Blood Angels red and yellow with the Yamden yellow. There are like a couple of trims on the pants that are going to be painted also red and those had to be painted white beforehand because we want the color to pop. Otherwise, it's gonna make a little bit of a difference. It's gonna look purple because red and blue are gonna become purple by mixing. The flesh is going to be painted with Killerman Flesh and with the Yam in Yellow, as I said before, we're going to touch up the Aquila Imperialis that we have both in the helmet, the last gun, those which are going to represent the fringes and the canteen on the back has also an Aquila Imperialis. I'm retouching those fringes now with pure paint, in this case it's going to be Flash Kids Yellow and I'm highlighting here and there to make it pop a little bit more because sometimes contrast do darken too much. Iron Breaker is going to be painted in metallic parts of the last gun and basically after a few highlights with pure white very carefully and watered down that I'm going to use for making some areas of the uniform pop and painting the eyes and the teeth, the miniature is done. The Valhallan Imperial Guard Soldier probably is the one that I enjoy the most painting. We're gonna start with Apothecary White by painting the jacket and Warp Lining Contrast is going to go to the pants and the canteen in the back. Then with this same color I'm gonna paint some blotches here and there 
in the jacket and the armor to represent the camouflage that this Imperial Guard unit had in 2nd edition. I'm going to use now Grief Charger Grey to paint several parts of the miniature. We are going to do the boots, the trim in the jacket, the helmet, the weapon and also the sheath of the knife and a pouch here and there. And after we doing that, we are going to also use it to darken the green uniform, the pants in this case. I like Grief Charger Grey to darken greens and it is weird because it's actually like a grayish color but it has this green tint, this green hue that actually works very well with that. With Basilican and Grey, as usual, we're gonna darken the parts that are gonna become black later on and I'm gonna paint the metallic parts as well because this is gonna be the base for that. Skeleton Horde is going to be used in the back of the neck and the handle of the knife to make it look like leather. And with Orc Flesh we're gonna paint both the helmet and the last weapon to achieve this nice militaristic green color. Now I'm gonna use pure white, watered down, to make sure that I recover a little bit of the white uniform that we have in the original paint job here and there by leaving a little bit of the grey underneath that we achieve with Apothecary White. We're gonna use Contrast Gilliman Flesh to paint the hands and the face and with Iron Breaker we're gonna highlight certain areas of the laser gun as we see in the original paint job. For those of you who have a good pulse, you can paint now the eyes, the teeth and those small details with pure white and then just add a small dot in the middle to have the eyes painted. I say that I enjoy painting the Valhalla miniatures the most, but the Talon guys are actually quite interesting themselves. I started by painting the pants with this wash over here, which is a Vallejo wash, the green wash. And the idea was trying to get a green that is a little bit different from the other ones that I used until now. And I think I achieved that by doing this base color. With the Yandan yellow, I painted the jacket, which is going to be in a very desertic theme. And then with this color here, which is warp lining, I darken both the pants and the laser gun. I also put a few dots with the original green that I used before here and there, retouch a little bit the uniform, and then we move on to the next step, which is using Basilican and Grey directly onto the gun in the places that we're going to be painted metallic. The original miniatures are wearing turbans on the head and I use Apothecary White to paint the helmet in order to copy that color scheme. On a desert uniform, it is obvious that surface sepia is going to be quite prevalent. I painted the armor, the leather pouches and whatnot, I did a pink wash on certain areas of the pants, I painted the boots and without diluting it at all, I painted small blotches in the uniform so I can get that interesting camo pattern that these miniatures did have in 2nd edition. I did a second wash, more controlled now, with Grief Charge Grey to do it in the pants and the green areas of the uniform and the laser gun. And then I used Wild Wood to give a second coat on certain areas of leather, like the lower half of the boots, the pouches, the belts, etc. etc. I used Pure White now to clean up the helmet in order to make it look a little bit highlighted from the apothecary white and then I painted the flesh because I wanted to follow up with a flesh wash and I wanted the flesh to look a little bit more pale so it goes contrasting against the darker yellowish uniform that we have in these miniatures For the fragmentation grenades that the miniature has in the back, I painted them white and then I gave them a coat of pteranodon turquoise to achieve this nice color that is not as green as other parts of the miniature and gives a little bit more contrast. As usual, we're gonna finish the laser gun by highlighting certain areas with iron breakers and I will finish up by just doing the eyes and the teeth in the mouth of the miniature and call it a day so we can move on to the next Imperial Guard. For the last one I left the one that I like the least and it's the Katachan Imperial Guard and the reason for that is because these miniatures do not have those massive arms exposed, you cannot paint the flesh as you want it, so that's it. Plague Bearers, 
is used for the whole uniform that we're gonna follow up with contrast warp lining at the bottom the pants and then we're gonna use once again great charger gray to paint the pauldrons the armor the boots and some of the different leather pouches that we have in the miniature i'm gonna use green wash the one from vallejo to paint the last gun and then basilican and gray is going to use to paint the boots and the leather parts that we had before and also a few blotches in the pants to represent the camouflage that we have from second edition paint job i'm gonna get my detail brush and use basilican and gray to paint inside those blotches to make sure that they actually are solid in the inside with a little bit of feathering on the outside of it Seraphine sepia will be used to darken the plague bear's flesh color that we have on the jacket as well as painting the hands and the face of the soldier and then we're gonna use orc flesh to darken the laser weapon that he's carrying. I'm gonna use now white to recover the color on the helmet and the grenades and a little bit on the flesh for the later wash on Gilliman flesh and we're gonna paint the helmet with blood angels red in order to make it look like the bandanas that the original miniatures had. Time now to get that Killiman flesh wash on top of the hands and the face and we're gonna end up by doing a little bit of touch-ups here and there on the details that we're missing like this one in the grenades with Terradon Turquoise and Iron Breaker to make sure that the metal parts of the weapon look shiny in here and there. If you have a good pulse, I think it's a worthy idea just to get those eyes painted and the teeth so that's what i'm doing right here to be followed up with a small dot of pure black in the pupil of the eyes i wanted the bases to look like second edition warhammer 40k bases and originally i thought that hex ray flame would be a nice color to work with but you know what I changed my mind later on so if you want to do it just use this one and then follow up with warp lining contrast to achieve my results Whoa! well it's taking a little bit longer than yesterday and the reason is that I have five different miniatures with five different color schemes and it's not as easy as yesterday's wolves so overall I clocked around 30 40 minutes on top of what I was supposed to do so that puts it at two hours and 40 minutes for today not gonna gym today the gym is gonna close in an hour I'm not gonna be able to make it and do whatever I want to do so I'm gonna take it easy today I think if I were doing this with five miniatures that were exactly the same I will have finished not only five maybe even ten of them within two hours bro get a lot of this guy but you know I mean experimenting checking this filming recording a lot of excuses but what you're gonna do not bad anyways <laughs> Back home time. Today I decided that I want to try to paint something that doesn't have that many components, that many different parts. Because I'm quite tired actually and I would like to be able to go to you know to the gym and maybe even take a nap. I don't think that, that part is gonna happen. So what I'm going to do is try to find the codex, tier units second edition warhammer 40k this way i'm gonna find the color schemes that they used to have and hopefully i'm gonna be able to recreate some of those let's see what i find first and then i'm gonna decide let's see if i actually am able to find the one that i really want and i'm not getting any viruses in the process it will be it will be hilarious that doing tyrants i get um, an infection on my on my pc yeah that would be not bueno Sí, sí, sí. No estaría bien, no. No, no, no. And score. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, we got the classic red era tyranids. I love that. And they are purple and red and bone. And they have this. Get away from her, you bitch. <sighs> Shade of green. This is happening. This is happening. They are very eclectic. Here we have the termagants, which is what I'm going to paint today. Definitely, we need to go with the classic. Uh, Tyranid color scheme which is reddish definitely we're gonna do this what else we can try something with some greens and bones and like a combination of things but I think I'm gonna do two red and bone two purple so now it's time to rush the wash 
So it was the time to paint these awesome miniatures and I decided to go back to the wisdom of the magnificent and genius Mike McVeigh, as he was one of the guys responsible for painting these in the studio. After all, who am I to decide how to paint aliens better than anyone like him? But the second edition book is a little bit in its infancy in regards to lore, and therefore I think that there is not much of a difference between Behemoth, Leviathan and other high fleets back then. So in order to approach this paint job, I decided just to combine the different things that I was seeing in the codex and come up with different color schemes that would fit the build for all of these aliens with their second edition look. These are the different paints that I use for each one of the miniatures that you can see on the screen right now. And after we check those out, it's time to start painting some Tyranids. The first step was deciding what color would I use for each one of these creatures. The good thing about this tutorial is that I did experiment quite a lot and you can see the results yourselves and decide which one of the different color schemes or which one of the paints you want to use to achieve the different results that I did. The base colors that I used were Yand and Yellow, Vallejo Red Wash, Volupus Pink, Vallejo Blue Wash and Grid Charger Grey. And I followed through with each one of them with different paints to see what were the different mixtures that I could achieve with each one of these base colors. <laughs> For the tyranny that I had primed Yand in yellow, I followed through with Blood Angels Red. I also used Blood Angels Red with the one that I had primed before with Grief Charger Grey. And the one that I had painted with Vallejo Red Wash, I also painted with Blood Angels Red. So now I have three reddish tyranids and I wanted to achieve something purple. So I used Magus Purple for the other two, the one that I had primed before with Volupus Pink and with Vallejo Blue Wash to achieve two different and very distinctive purplish colors. It was time now to paint the cap rays on the miniatures and I decided to go with Ultramarines. I painted the one that I had primed before with Volupus Pink and followed with Magus Purple and also the one with Grief Charger Grey which had been painted afterwards Blood Angels Red. I opened this purple, she's purple, which is very dark, it's almost like if you had spilled ink from a ball pen, and I started painting the cap rays of the one that I had primed with Vallejo Red Wash and then Blood Angels, and then also the one that I had painted with Vallejo Blue Wash and Magus Purple. The original paint job on the Termagons and the Hormagons had these plates on top of the head with a dark purple color, so I used the she's purple also in there. And then I started picking all the joints between the Kitunus plates in the Tyranids and the small holes that they had over there and further darken also the Kitunus plate that I had painted before with Ultramarine's blue by using Siege Purple. As you can see I'm leaving the edges without painting them and that's basically it with this color. I was getting quite happy with the results but I wanted to go a, a little bit extra on the highlights in these miniatures so they pop a little bit more. So I started highlighting some of the kittiness plates with pure white, diluted a little bit and by doing this I will then follow up with a glaze so to make sure that this is not pure white at the end of the day. I also was cleaning some of the hoops, some of the things that I will paint later with a different color so as to make sure that the color will be clean and nice and not mixed with the previous coats. So it's time to start glazing. Ultramarine's blue can be used for this if you water it down. So I'm doing this right here so it doesn't look as black as much as it does blue and also on these other miniatures. There is a lot of experimenting here. The recipe is not perfect. You might want to avoid some of the steps, do things differently. I don't know. It's up to you. As I said, I was having fun with these miniatures 
and the recipe is not absolutely nailed down while I'm painting. But if I had to do it all over again, I would probably change a couple of things here and there just to make sure that I paint them faster. But as you can see, glazing after the white. Time to change the water because it was absolutely destroyed already after so many washes and doing some glazing here with blood letter. So I did one before with Fuegan Orange and now with Blood Letter. Both of these colors are discontinued. You might want to try some of the new air colors that Paint Workshop released as an alternative for that if the colors that we're using for contrast are too strong for your liking. Over here, I'm doing a Skeleton Horde on the teeth, on the hooves of some of the miniatures and then also on the nails that they have in the gun. Well, actually calling that gun is a little bit of an overstatement. It's a biological form that basically spits needles and things like that. And in the original paint job, they are green. And that's what I'm going to look for in here. I'm going to try different greens, warp lining, orc flesh. Uh, I'm also trying dark angels, military gray, Vallejo green wash. And I'm trying all of these because I want to see the different ways that you can paint these and still look acceptable. I end up by giving to all of these a coat of Pterodon Turquoise, which is gonna make them look much more similar than if we let only one paint. So after painting with all these washes, uh, final glaze with Pterodon Turquoise, and then a further highlight with pure white will be the thing that seals the deal. It is almost time to go to the gym, so I'm gonna do a little bit of touch-up. I'm not gonna have enough time to paint the whole miniature before going to the gym. So, a little bit of a and yellow on this guy, and then I'm gonna get changed and go to get some weights lifted. I don't know what time is it right now. Maybe 9.30, 9.40. Something like that. <sighs> Back from the gym. I think I'm gonna finish the Tyrannis now. Even before the shower. You know, in the mood for it. Otherwise after a shower I just want to go to sleep. So as I said before, I opened my pure white, diluted a little bit. Mine is actually mixed with white ink in the pot, so it makes it quite liquid and it makes it flow very well to what I want to do, which is final highlights, not painting it with pure white most of the time. And I'm just picking up the details in these bio weapons, and making sure they pop and they do look a little bit more three-dimensional than if they were only with the washes that I gave them. For the second edition looking bases, I tried to paint once again with Hess Graves, but I learned my lesson later on. Miniatures, when you're gonna see them painted now, are actually unfinished on that regard. As you can see, it's a very bright color and I didn't really, really like it too much. So I ended up giving them a further coat of warp lining and that was what made them look the way I wanted them to look. 